So certain players go onto the combine and they just put on a show. They could be a projected second rounder, third rounder. And if they do well at the NFL Combine, they increase their stock to being a top 12 pick. This has actually happened in the past with Don Terry Poe. Defensive tackle was a potential second rounder, third rounder when he was drafted. But because of his NFL Combine performance, which was one of the best in NFL history, he catapulted and shot his way up inside of the top 11, drafted number 11 by the Kansas City Chiefs overall. So there are some players out there that need to have a Don Terry Poe-like combine to increase your draft stock. And obviously, when I talk about the most to prove, obviously those late rounders, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh rounders, of course, obviously, without question. I'm talking about the first rounders, the second rounders. Like, how can they improve their draft stock? So I'm going to talk about certain players that need to do well at the NFL combine to increase their draft stock and solidify themselves as a first round draft pick. The first player I'm going to be talking about, or I should say players, all quarterbacks. I know it's a cop out because there's not one particular quarterback that I can lean in and say, listen, this guy needs to prove himself way more than the other quarterback. It's all quarterbacks. We heard about it. When we talked about Mitch Trubisky just earlier in the show, how NFL teams at the Combine, what reporters are hearing is that Mitch Trubisky, a veteran quarterback who's said to be a free agent, 27 years old, is talked about amongst the teams way more than the quarterbacks in the 2022 draft class. I mean, this is one of the weaker quarterback draft classes, according to many, in a long time. So if you want to talk about who has the most to prove, it's all of the quarterbacks. This is Kenny Pickett. This is Malik Willis. This is a Desmond Ritter, Sam Howell, all those guys. The nature of the position is going to make them a first rounder. It's bound to happen. People are going to draft up. They're going to overdraft for the quarterback of their future just because like, by the time you get around to the second round, one of the quarterbacks that they wanted could be gone. Whatever their strategy is, they're going to overdraft. It's going to happen. I wouldn't be surprised if Kenny Pickett is a top 10 pick. Player number two, that is the most approved at the NFL Combine. Kayvon Thibodeau, defensive end from Oregon. What a beast of a man this guy is. Incredible. Incredible talent, athletic ability, raw, pure talent at defensive end. The thing with him is I've seen many mock drafts. And again, I'm not an NFL scout. I don't watch a lot of college football. So I am just basing my information off of uh, what the college football experts are saying. And what the draft experts are saying is that Thibodeau could be as early as a top three pick, but he could drop as low as a mid first round pick. But I I mean, because of that, because of the wide range on how teams view him, I'd say that he is up there as one of the players that has the most to prove at the 2022 scouting combine. We talk about raw talents and not really fitting into the defensive end position or having a grasp on it too well at this point, at least playing at the elite level at the NFL. Well, let me give you another example of a player that uh, had the raw talent, but was kind of iffy at first. That player was Josh Allen, who Mel Kuyper, which was a good call, by the way, stated that is going to be the best quarterback in that 2018 draft class. He was right. Uh, Lamar Jackson is up there as well. Like, yeah, you can debate that. But uh, so far, he's he knocked that prediction out of the park. Raw talent, but teams were iffy on him. Kayvon Thibodeau, raw talent, but teams are iffy on him. So, yeah, I mean, the NFL Combine is the place where you put on a show. You sh- showcase your physical, raw ability, and Kayvon Thibodeau, without a doubt, is going to impress a lot of teams. And I, I think this is just a prediction. I don't think he falls outside of the top five. The next player. How about Derek Stingley Jr., cornerback, LSU? And the reason I say that he has the most proof at the scouting combine is because he had a great freshman season. Fantastic. And it was regarded as one of the better cornerbacks in college football. And people were like, man, if only he was going in the NFL, NFL draft after his freshman year. 
Like, he'd be one of the better defensive backs in the NFL. Like, he was so good. Talked amongst the NFL community for a long time that when he goes into the NFL, he's going to be great. Well, then after his freshman season, he wasn't bad, but, like, it, it didn't go back to being the Derek Stingley Jr. that we saw his freshman year. And now he enters the NFL uh, Combine, NFL Draft, and teams are like, okay, well, here's a player that could have been a top three, top five pick. And now people are saying, ah, I'd be surprised if he gets inside of the top 10. Maybe he's like a late top 10 pick, maybe like a nine or a 10, but I, I don't see him as a top five pick anymore. So Derek Stingley needs to go out there, have a great combine performance in front of these teams, and prove that he's still talented as he once was to his freshman year at LSU. So Stingley is one of those players that has the most approved. And then the last player that has the most approved. Again, don't think I'm an idiot because I know that he tore his ACL. Hear me out. Jameson Williams, Alabama. And it's not because of the physical attributes. It's because of the mental aspects and the interviews that the NFL Combine conducts, that teams conduct with these players. The New England Patriots are a confirmed team that already have a, an interview scheduled with Jamison Williams at the NFL Combine. And there's going to be many more teams out there. Williams, with his ACL tear, is regarded as maybe a top 20, top 25, top 30 pick. That's perfectly fine. He's going to be drafted in the first round. He's going to miss the first few weeks of the season. But the NFL Combine is so important as far as the interview process goes. There's players that don't get drafted because of how poorly they do in the interview process. To give you guys an example, we actually came out with a video. Uh, we had the opportunity to interview and follow the combine preparation of when Hakeem Adeniji, who's the starting offensive guard, I want to say, for the Cincinnati Bengals, played in the Super Bowl, started in the Super Bowl. Uh, when he was being drafted, uh, his agents conducted a whole NFL combine mock simulation, like, mock interviews, how you should interview. Uh, if you guys want to go back and watch that video, I'll go ahead and put it up top. Uh, click on that if you want to watch it. But uh, just just a couple years ago was when he went through that combine prep and just through sitting through that, experiencing it myself on how a combine interview goes and how it's processed and how it works, it's very intense, very intense. So for Jamison Williams, this is the time for him to prove during these combine interviews Listen, I know that I have an ACL injury. I'm going to be out for the first few weeks of the season. That's okay. Look at me as a person. Look at me as a leader. I'll be a good asset to this team, even off the field. So Jamison Williams has a lot to prove in the NFL scouting combine. But those are players that I say that has a lot to prove in the NFL scouting combine. If you guys think it differently, please leave your comments and your thoughts down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Love to interact with you guys.